Three baseball drink shots. Wait. Bonjour everyone, Petouf here today for a new video in which we're going to celebrate the fact that Wargaming is finally implementing again in the game a free-to-play event aka the Panzer 4H Gargoyle that should be a free-to-play event that will start in four hours by the time I'm recording because it starts around 2 p.m. CET uh, for French. I don't know how, about other regions but you have like a notification tab on the game that will tell you everything you need to know about this event and I thought you know what to celebrate that it would be a good idea for me to present to you two seal clubbing tanks that are completely free to play and that you can find at tier 4. And to do that, we start off with one of the most popular and I think you already understand what uh, this tank is all about because you show it as I was talking, aka the Matilda, a tier 4 British tank. This tank is kind of weird when we take a look at its class and how to play it because it acts like a heavy uh, by being a medium at the same time, it's kind of strange. What I mean by that is that, yes, you do have the medium status with this tank, but you will never play it like a medium tank because you have not a single characteristic that is linked to being a medium. What I mean by that is when we take a look at the good sides and downsides of the tank. Overall, you have an amazing and impressive armor, a really good DPM and a really bad mobility. So basically everything that is linked to heavy tanks. Now, there are several things you need to understand about this tank. Yes, it's an extremely good silk clubbing tank as long as you know what you're doing, obviously. But on top of that, it also depends on what kind of tier you are facing. For example, when you're bottom tier, like it's the case in this game, you are really going to struggle penetrating your targets because the penetration of the Matilda is definitely not the best. As you can see against the T1 Heavy, that is one of the most armored tanks at tier 5, we are struggling if we're not shooting at the weak spot straight, even with those gold shells. Now, if you are bottom tier, how do you want to play it? It's quite simple, in fact. When you're bottom tier, you want to stick with the rest of your heavies. You want to wait for them to take shots because you, even if you have quite a strong armor against tier 5, they will penetrate like it's butter. So you wait for your opponents to sneak shots on your allies like we're doing here with the T1 Heavy facing the KV-1. And after you sneak around, and as you have 3.3 seconds of reload for 80 alpha damage, you are going to pack some several damage. Just take a look at this. The T1 Heavy doesn't care about us. He's really focusing on the KV-1 which is for the best for us because yeah we managed to pull out a 400 damage game now and another thing when you're top tier with this tank that's where the fun begins because when you're top tier with it you can just roll in rush in destroy everything as long as you don't show your side armor and stay straight in front of your opponents you will not struggle now the real question is why would you play something like that in the current matchmaking? Because at the moment if you take a look at the 8.0 update that, br that brought us the M6U, if you play top tier you are gonna have a matchmaking filled with those kind of broken tanks at the moment and it's not necessarily enjoyable. It's either you play the M6U and you're having the time of your life or you're not playing the M6U and you're getting completely wrecked. So yeah, if you want to take a break from that just take the Matilda. But please do not abuse that tactic because Let's respect the newbies that are just starting the game and are starting to enjoy it. We don't want to make their experience as shitty as possible. All right, guys, the second tank I want to talk about is obviously the B1 bis or Char B1 bis in French, and that is a French tier four tank. And out of the two I'm presenting to you today, this one is my favorite by far. And I'm gonna explain to you briefly why right now. The good sides about this tank is that it's packing everything it needs. It has a really good mobility, a really good armor or a really good armor for mobility ratio. I don't know if that's a thing, but you get the spirit. And on top of that, an amazing gun. Unlike the Matilda that reloads in 3.3 seconds, here you're gonna take a little bit longer because your reload is sitting at one second higher at 4.3 seconds, which implies that the Matilda has a better DPM. But unlike the Matilda, here you have 90 alpha damage and not 80 per shot. But overall, yeah, the gun of the Matilda is way better. But is it a problem with this tank? Not necessarily. You're not gonna feel too much of a difference. And if you have to choose between both, I mean, you don't even have to choose between the Matilda and the B1. Those are tier 4 tanks. They are 
quite easy to unlock so you will not struggle and i will definitely tell you that you need to get those two in order for you to have some fun in this game but uh the downside the big downside of that tank unlike the matilda that can react when it's bottom tier here with the b1 it's kind of horrible because that tank doesn't feature the best dpm ever compared to the matilda it's still quite a good one but i mean comparing it to the matilda and on top of that the armor profile is really good against tier 3 tier Tier 4 but horrible against tier 5 because against tier 5 you literally don't have any armor you're like a big plate of weak spots literally everywhere and this is kind of frustrating but that's the game i mean those seal clubbing tanks are quite good when they're top tier and average when they are bottom tier and that's how we're gaming intended to balance them but if you want to be sure to have something completely broken, you can switch to the premium version of that tank called the Panzer B2 or uh, Char B2. And the B2 is basically a copy paste of the B1, but that features a preferential matchmaking. For those of you that don't know what a preferential matchmaking is, it's basically uh, something that will not allow your tank to fight tanks above your tier which implies that with the panzer b1 you can face tier 5 whereas when you're playing with the panzer b2 you are facing tier 4 maximum you are always top tier and being always top tier with the panzer b2 is something delightful because it's one of the most broken tanks at tier 4 if not the most broken due to its preferential matchmaking and you're gonna have some juicy games because of that so yeah, the presentation is over. I really wanted to talk about those two tanks to celebrate. Hopefully you enjoyed. And yeah, I would definitely encourage you to try out those two if you didn't already, because they are really worth at least one or two games or play them as long as you get some Masteries badges. And yeah, trust me, it's way better than fighting M6Os all day long. See ya.